about a year ago, Greg Kokel uh, posted this video or uh, cross-examined actually posted it where Greg Kokel answers this question. How do I respond if I'm asked to state my pronouns? Uh, the video has over a million views, which is pretty extraordinary. I'm going to play the first 30 seconds of it and then offer my reply. I'm going to link the entire video down below so you can check it out if you like. When people ask you for your preferred pronouns, don't give the pronouns that match your sex because you're then saying these are the pronouns I prefer. Mm. I just happen to be cisgendered, you mm. know, so I prefer he and him because I'm a male. But now you're playing into the narrative. Sure. Instead respond, I don't have a preferred pronoun. I have a sex. Mm -hmm. I'm male, for example, or female. Okay, so that's uh, the video. Let's now debrief. I'm just going to say, I think this is not good advice. I think it's bad advice. Uh, first of all, I am cisgender. It's not some nefarious value loaded concept. It's simply a description. That means that my gender identity uh, corresponds with my birth sex. That's a descriptive fact. Not surprisingly, I prefer that you use pronouns that are consistent with my self understanding, he and him. Now, I was also given a name at birth, Randall, and I prefer that you use the name Randall when you refer to me rather than calling me Rando or Randa Rooney or Randy Meister. Now, the answer uh, that if you just give a similar answer here, these are my preferred pronouns, which implies or entails that you're cisgendered. That's not buying into a narrative. It's not capitulating to an ideology. It completely underdetermines your personal views on the relationship between sex and gender or cis and trans identity. Those are just additional questions. All this is doing is responding to a specific question about how do you like to be referred to? And when Kokel says, no, you need to plant a flag here and establish that, no, uh, I, I wasn't, uh, these are not what I prefer. This is my birth sex, right? You see how they, they juxtaposed videos by showing people giving facial expressions that are kind of consistent with the response that you would have presumably on Kokel's flag staking. I think that that's just a mistake. All it's going to do is alienate you unnecessarily from other people by making you look combative and contrarian. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say there's a, a new professor that's hired into the department at the university. Her name is Dr. Josephine Smith. And so she's introduced to a fellow colleague in the department at the, the welcome luncheon. And the, and the colleague asks her, he says, do you prefer Dr. Smith or Josephine? And she replies, I don't prefer Dr. Smith. I am Dr. Smith. I was awarded an academic doctorate in 2010, and Smith is my surname. Now, she could be responding in that way because she's thinking if she just says, oh, I prefer Dr. Smith, what she's really doing is capitulating to certain patriarchal attitudes that may predispose this gentleman to ask her whether she prefers first name or surname or something like that. But really all that she is doing in that moment, in that exchange, is alienating a colleague by appearing overly defensive and combative. And I would argue that something is similar here. When someone asks you what your preferred pronouns are and you're cisgender and you prefer he him or she, her, then let's see, these are my the pronouns I prefer. Or if you like, these are the pronouns I use, or these are the pronouns by which you should refer to me. You don't need to plant a flag. And if there is some point in terms of understanding the relationship between cis and trans identity, that later on is gonna become an issue, you can cross that bridge when you come to it, but don't look for conflict with other people. And frankly, uh, that's what this ends up doing. And it's just, bad apologetics.